Good evening, everyone. I'm just saying this is his second night of the mission. I'm hoping that you all are ready for another night of diving into our, our Lenten season to be able to see the eyes of Mary and to understand the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ through the, the words, the paintings, the music, and just the spirit that we have here this evening. Also this evening, after this brief reflection, we will have a Goodwill offering collection that will be going towards Father Lou's mission, which is Friends of the Word. We have those postcards that we were handing out, the young children were hang handing out. There's a URL code there, as well as I have sign-up sheets if you'd like to receive emails, videos, just great messages from Father Lou and Friends of the Word on a daily basis. They're beautiful re reflections and inspirations. So I encourage everybody to, to write your name for email or, again, use the URL code to uh, find out more information. Thank you for being here, and God bless. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Mary, Mother of Jesus, be with us tonight as we closely reflect on your journey toward Calvary and the crucifixion. The experience that you had is personal. You mourned for God, dead in your arms, and now he lives, calling us together to remember his journey and your journey with him through, through this season of the 40 days of Lent, so that we may be never discouraged but proud to have a God who watches over us and loves us, and a dear mother who watches over her church, all of us. We thank you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Eighth Station, Jesus Speaks to the Women. I was walking a few steps behind Jesus when I saw him stop. Some women were there, crying for him and pitying him. He told them not to shed tears for him. They had the opportunity to accept him as the Messiah. Like many others, they rejected him instead. He told them to shed tears for themselves, tears that would bring their conversion. They did not see the connection between that and his walk to death. I did, and as he walked on, I followed silently. My Savior, many times have I acted like these women, always seeing the faults of others and pitying them. Yet very rarely have I seen my own sinfulness and asked your pardon. Lord, you have taught me through these women Forgive me, Lord, for my blindness. As the Lord carries his cross, he has moments of sympathy. The women who followed him in his ministry are now surprised that he made cripples walk, he made deaf hear, he fed thousands from a little piece of bread. They're surprised now that he's allowing this to happen to him. They're surprised that this is God in the flesh being mocked as he carries his cross. They're with him, the women who followed his ministry, the women who would dress him and his body before the tomb. The women whose children he touched, they are here with us, presenting themselves to the Lord, 
sorrowful, horrified, realizing that the miracle worker needs a miracle. But Jesus is not calling the powers of heaven down upon him. Jesus is not seeking the Father's intervention. This is part of his plan. Octava estación. Jesús se encuentra con las mujeres de Jerusalén. Iba caminando unos pasos detrás de Jesús cuando vi que se detuvo. Algunas mujeres estaban ahí llorando por él y compadeciéndose de mi hijo. Jesús les dijo que no derramaran lágrimas por él. Ellas tuvieron la oportunidad de aceptarlo como Mesías. Como muchos otros, también ellas lo rechazaron. Les dijo que más bien derramaran lágrimas por ellas mismas. Lágrimas que las llevaran a la conversión. Ellas no veían la relación entre esto y el camino de mi hijo a la muerte. Yo sí. Y así caminé y lo seguí en silencio. Salvador mío, muchas veces he actuado como estas mujeres, viendo siempre las faltas de los demás y compadeciéndome de ellos. Y muy rara vez he visto mi propia maldad y pedido tu perdón. Señor, tú me has dado una lección en estas mujeres. Perdóname, Señor, por mi ceguera. He tells them to weep not for him, but for themselves and for their children. What does that mean? They ponder. After he rises from the dead, they will understand. He didn't need their pity. He needs our hearts to take care of one another to follow his word and appreciate his presence in our lives.
ninth station, Jesus falls for the third time. This fall of Jesus was agony to me. Not only had he fallen on the rocky ground again, but now he was almost at the top of the hill of crucifixion. The soldiers screamed at him and abused him, almost dragging him the last few steps. My heart pounded as I imagined what they would do to him next. But I knew this had to be, so I climbed the hill silently behind him. My loving Jesus, I know that many times I have offered my hand to help people, but when it became inconvenient or painful to me, I left them, making excuses for myself. Help me, Lord, to be like your mother, Mary, and never take my supporting hand away from those who need it. It's almost as if she can't believe what is happening. She remembers the angel's message. She remembers Simeon's message. But would it really be this bad? We look for our own pity and strength when we are going through our weak moments. What was Mary going through? Never cursing God, never asking why, as the sun falls again, and the weight of the cross falls upon him. The weight of the wood that he would have played with as a child in his father's carpentry shop now falls on him. Is it wood or is it the sin of mankind? People who don't forgive one another during this season of Lent, we are challenged to remember why he did this. Certainly not for himself. He was sinless. But for the sins of all those who would come after him and who preceded him. When he dies, he will go and open the gates of the nether world and allow the ancestors of Jesus and our own to enter into the eternal life. But before that, before that, he has to suffer. He has to experience it. He has to invite us to be one with him as he carries the weight of our sins to Calvary. Novena estación. Jesús cae por tercera vez. Con esta caída de Jesús comenzó la agonía para mí. No solamente cayó nuevamente en el suelo pedregoso, sino que estaba ya por llegar a la cima de la crucifixión. Los soldados le gritaron y lo maltrataron, casi hasta arrastrarlo en sus últimos pasos, imaginando cuál sería la siguiente injuria. ¿Qué le harían? Se me destrozó el corazón. Yo sabía que esto tenía que suceder. Y así, subí al cerro detrás de él en silencio. Mi amado Jesús, reconozco que muchas veces he, tenido mi, he tendido mi mano para ayudar a la gente. Pero cuando esto me trae inconvenientes o me causa sufrimiento, los dejo poniendo pretextos. Ayúdame, Señor, a ser como María, tu madre, 
y nunca retirar el apoyo de mi mano a quienes lo necesitan. The tenth station, Jesus is stripped of his garments. With my son finally relieved of the weight of the cross, I thought he would have a chance to rest. But the guards immediately started to rip his clothes off his blood clotted skin. The sight of my son in such pain was unbearable. Yet, since I knew this had to be, I stood by and cried silently. Lord, in my own way, I too have stripped you. I have taken away the good name of another by foolish talk and have stripped people of human dignity by my prejudice. Jesus, there are so many ways I have offended you through the hurt I have caused others. Help me to see you in all people. It may have seemed like a nightmare for Mary. Seeing her adult child son being stripped like an animal before everyone. And as he stripped naked, the wounds open up again the wounds that were placed on his shoulders and torso by the strangers, the soldiers who whipped him. He was treated like an animal being led to slaughter. No respect was shown him. And in the centuries to follow, would we, would we be able to respect our own bodies, the body that he was given by his mother and incarnate by his father in heaven, now is a vision of lust, a vision of poverty, a vision of disgrace. What was Mary's thought as she sung her weeping songs, watching her son bleed to death as he stripped naked in front of the crowds the crowds that he gave food to, the crowds that he healed. 
What is Mary's response? What would our response be? The embarrassment. This is the Son of God, Son of Mary, being treated like a lamb to slaughter. Décima estación. Jesús es despojado de sus vestiduras. Con mi hijo finalmente aligerado del peso de la cruz, pensé que podría tener oportunidad de descansar, pero los soldados comenzaron luego a arrancarle las ropas de su piel llena de sangre coagulada. El ver a mi hijo en tanto dolor me fue insoportable. Y así, sabiendo que todo esto tenía que suceder, me quedé de pie, llorando en silencio. Señor, a mi manera yo también te he desnudado. He despojado a otros de su buena fama, con murmuraciones sin sentido. Y despojé de su dignidad a seres humanos con mis prejuicios. Jesús, te he ofendido de muchas maneras a través de las ofensas hechas a otros. Ayúdame a verte en todas las gentes. The eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. As they threw Jesus on the cross, he willingly allowed himself to be nailed. As they punctured his hands and his feet, I felt pain in my heart. Then they lifted up the cross. There he was, my son, whom I love so much, being scorned as he struggled for the last few moments of earthly life. But I knew this had to be, so I stood by and prayed silently. Lord, what pain you endured for me, and what pain your mother went through, seeing her only son die for love of me. Yet both you and she are ready to forgive me as soon as I repent of my sin. Help me, Lord, to turn away from my sinfulness.
He had sympathy for the mother whose son died and he was being carried to his grave. He had sympathy for the woman accused of adultery. He had sympathy for the blind man who asked a simple question, yes, Lord, I want to see. And where was his sympathy? When he's being nailed to the cross and Mary can't even reach him, can't even express her own feelings about the death and crucifixion of her own son. Where's her sympathy? Mary teaches us, as our mother and mother of the church, to take the lessons of the crucifixion seriously, to hold each person in a great deal of respect, not the kind of respect that he did not receive from the soldiers, from the guards, from those who accused him of so many things. No, that's not the respect he's asking of us. He's asking us to respect one another as he would have respected us. Simple. With our hearts, with our souls, with our sympathy of human dignity. So she watches the nail go through his hands and his feet. She's alongside him. She feels every nail going through his body. And as she feels it, she asks the Father, Your will be done, you told me. And so Mary responds once again to the message of the angel, Fiat, 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 let it be done to me, voluntatis tui, according to your word. Onceava estación. Jesús es clavado en la cruz. Al tiempo que arrojaban a Jesús sobre la cruz, voluntariamente dejó que lo clavaran. Cuando agujeraron sus manos y sus pies, sentí el dolor en mi corazón. Después levantaron la cruz. Ahí estaba mi hijo, al que tanto amaba siendo despreciado a medida que luchaba hasta los últimos momentos de su vida terrena. Yo sabía que todo esto tenía que suceder, y así permanecí de pie y oré en silencio. Señor, cuánto dolor soportaste por mí, y cuánto dolor tu madre sufrió, viendo a su único hijo morir por amor a mí. A pesar de todo, ambos, tú y tu madre, están dispuestos a perdonarme, tan luego me arrepienta de mi pecado. Ayúdame, Señor, a apartarme de mi maldad.
When I was a child, I was very aware that my father worked in a crucible company, Dixon Crucible Company. You may not have heard it, but I'm sure many of us have used the products of that company. Ticonderoga pencils, the yellow pencils with the green tip and the eraser on top of that. Well, when those products, not only in black lead, but all colors, were damaged in some way, they would allow, the company would allow the workers to take them home. I always tell people I was born with a pencil in my hand, with a Ticonderoga pencil. And with the availability of paper and pen and paint and very supportive parents, I'm an Italian son, so whatever Louis wanted to do, it was all right. So I would paint. Started, and I remember eighth grade, I, well before that, but eighth grade, I was published of sorts. I was a fidgety kid, always doing something, getting in trouble. And during religion class, Sister Grace Polizotto said to me, Louis, um, you need to do something with your hands huh, to keep busy. And, and I, I said, I don't know, what are you talking about? <laughs> she knew. So she told me to bring in pens and paper and paints. And what I would do during religion class is paint. And it happened to be Lent when she first made that decision. So I painted. We had big blackboards and above them white boards. And she's, okay, do what you want to do up there. And she's teaching religion. And then the crucifixion came. And I couldn't get that image out of my head. I'm a kid, eighth grade, what is that? I don't know, 13? Of someone actually being nailed to a cross and then finding out that that someone was the son of God and Mary's son. Oh, now I remember why my mom was so upset during Holy Week if we would want to go outside and play on Good Friday. Nope, not on Good Friday. No jumping on the ground because Jesus walked the ground on Good Friday and fell three times. She's an eighth grade theologian. She graduated eighth grade, but she had more theology in her faith than some famous people. And with that, going to church and seeing the procession on Good Friday of Mata Dolorosa, Our Lady of Sorrows, made all the sense in the world to me. I'm painting out of who knows what, fidgetiness, anxiety, confusion. But when it came to painting for Good Friday, the paintings were a little darker, a lot sadder. From my background, my mother's Sicilian background, we had a great veneration for Mata Dolorosa and the church would take the statue, huge, completely dressed like that, and process her through the streets on Good Friday with the drums in the background, the cadence going on one step after another. And Good Friday got into my veins. Now, I didn't stop being fidgety. I didn't stop being a troublemaker in school. But Good Friday and how to connect with Jesus got into me artistically. It was a gift. I didn't deserve it. It was a gift. If anything else, I was a troublemaker. But it was a gift that through art and through painting, I could get out 
the anxieties that I was going through as a kid, later on as an adult. Growing up, and we all did that, grew up confused. Liking some people and disliking some people, thinking of judgments, thinking of authorities, always rejecting authorities, that was my style. But painting got me through it. Gave me sanity, I think. And my parents, again, very supportive, urban people, made a space in their basement for Louis space. And that's what it was called, Louis space. It was divided by a curtain. It was a big ba basement, but it was divided by a curtain. And that curtain was Louis space, and the rest was my father's space or whatever else they did in the basement. My mother stored things away and food, you know, canned foods. And it was painting that I realized that gave me healing. And now I share that healing with you. They're rough paintings, they're expressionistic paintings. But for me, they're healing. And they bring, us, bring me closer to Jesus and Mary, his dear mother. I hope they've done that for you. The twelve stays him. Jesus dies on the cross. What greater pain is there for a mother than to see her own son die right before her eyes? I, who have brought the Savior into the world and watched him grow, sit hopelessly beneath his cross as he lowered his head and died. His earthly anguish was finished, but mine was greater than ever. Yet, this had to be, and I had to accept it. So I stood by, and I mourned silently. My Jesus, have mercy on me. For what my sins have done to you and to others, I thank you for your greater act of love. You have said that true love is laying down your life for your friends. Let me always be your friend. Teach me to live my life for others. And not fail you again. And so he bows his head. And his mother sees his head bowing down. She saw that head so many times as a child. 
when he had a fever, she rubbed that head. When he fell, she bandaged that head. When he just didn't understand what Joseph the carpenter was trying to teach him, she cuddled that head like a mother who is so sympathetic for her son, maybe with attention deficit, maybe with autism, more sensitivity for him than the average person. As Jesus' head bowed down, she knew it wouldn't be getting up again. He wouldn't be coming out of this pain this time. This was the final step. But there was still that glimmer of hope. When the angel Gabriel told her she would be the mother of the Messiah, what did she think? Did she think the Messiah could even die? And Simeon said, a sword shall pierce your heart. Did she really understand what that meant? Now she did. Now she did. And she stands at her son's side as he bows his head for the last time. Weeping with his friends, with Mary, with John. Doceava estación. Jesús muere en la cruz. ¿Qué más doloroso sufrimiento puede haber para una madre que ver morir a su hijo mero enfrente de sus ojos? Yo, que traje al mundo al Salvador y que lo vi crecer, estuve de pie, impotente, bajo la cruz, al tiempo que inclinaba su cabeza y moría. Su angustia terrena había terminado, pero la mía era más terrible que nunca. Pero esto tenía que suceder, y lo había aceptado. Y así, permanecí de pie y sufrí en silencio. Jesús mío, ten misericordia de mí, por lo que mis pecados te han hecho y a los demás. Te doy gracias por tu gran acto de amor. Tú dijiste que el verdadero amor es dar la vida por los amigos. Permíteme ser siempre tu amigo. Enséñame a vivir mi vida para los demás y a no defraudarte otra vez.
The thirteenth station. Jesus is taken from the cross. The crowd has gone. The noise has stopped. I stood there quietly with one of my one of Jesus' friends and looked up at his dead body of our Savior, my son. Then two men took the body from the cross and placed him in my arms. A deep sorrow engulfed my being. Yet I also felt deep joy. Life has ended cruelly for my son, but it had also brought life to all of us. I knew this had to be, and I prayed silently. Lord, your passion has ended, yet it still goes on whenever I choose to sin over you. I have done my part in, cru in your crucifixion, and now, my Savior, I beg you your forgiveness with all my heart. Help me to live a life worthy of you and your mother. Sometimes called the Pietà, but there are no words that really can capture it. Laying the dead, broken body of Jesus into her arms. There are no words to describe the pain that Mary experienced. And with her, we mourn the pain of mothers today whose sons so often because of war or violence or terror have their sons and daughters laying in their arms. We join our prayers with them as we join our prayers with Mary as she mourns her son, the difference is she knows that her son will come back. Mothers today don't have that gift. We are mortal. Mary mourned with great tears, I'm sure, for this dead king this dead Messiah. No one can really understand her pain. Treceava estación. Jesús es bajado de la cruz. El gentío se fue, el alboroto se terminó. Yo me quedé de pie silenciosamente con uno de los amigos de Jesús y miré el cuerpo muerto de nuestro Salvador, mi hijo. En ese momento, dos hombres bajaron el cuerpo de la cruz y lo depositaron en mis brazos. Un profundo dolor se apoderó de mi ser, pero... Al mismo tiempo, sentí una profunda alegría. La vida había terminado cruelmente para mi hijo, pero esa misma muerte trajo la vida para todos nosotros. Yo sabía que todo esto tenía que suceder, y así oré en silencio. Señor, tu pasión terminó. Todavía tu pasión continúa cada vez que peco contra ti. He cooperado por mi parte a tu crucifixión y ahora, Salvador mío, imploro tu perdón con todo mi corazón. Ayúdame a vivir una vida digna de ti y de tu madre.
the fourteenth station. Jesus is placed in the tomb. We brought Jesus' body to a tomb, and I arranged it there myself. Silently weeping, silently rejoicing, I took one more look at my beloved son, and then I walked out. They closed the tomb, and before I left, I thought, I knew this had to be. It had to be for you. I wanted, I would wait in faith silently. Yes, my Lord, this had to be because you loved me. And for no other reason, all you ask is that I live a good life. You never said such a life would be easy. I'm willing to leave sin behind and live for you alone and my brothers and sisters. And so they depart in silence. Mary's comforted, but there is no comfort. She'll be comforted when she hears the news on the third day. The news that was predicted that the Son of God would die and be raised on the third day. So the stone gets rolled over and seals the tomb. And quietly, they depart. But Mary's heart stays in the tomb because she's a mother and her son is in that tomb. Catorceava estación. Jesús es sepultado. Llevamos el cuerpo de Jesús a una tumba y yo misma lo coloqué ahí, llorando en silencio, alegrándome en silencio. Eché una mirada más a mi amado hijo, y después salí. Cerraron la tumba, y antes de que me fuera, pensé. Yo sabía que todo esto tenía que suceder, que tenía que suceder por ti, y que tenía que esperar con fe, en silencio. Sí, Señor mío, esto tenía que suceder por el amor que me tienes y no por otra razón. Lo único que te pido es que viva una vida buena. Nunca dijiste que una vida así fuera fácil. Quiero dejar atrás el pecado y vivir solamente para ti, en mis hermanas y hermanos. Thank you all for being here tonight. 
was a beautiful experience. Thank you, Father Lou. I know my heart is always open and, and I'm very cheerful, so it's hard to, to talk too much after that. Just a few announcements. Thank you to all that has helped put this together. I especially want to thank Father Lou. We want to thank Friends of the Word, Jerry, who is graciously helping to tape as well. Everybody here who's been able to help with readers, music, reading, the painting, the paint helpers. This is a labor of love and a gift to you in this life and journey. These evenings were put together by a great team of people, talented people, readers, musicians, and everyone who assisted in cleanup as well as setup. We thank you for joining us. The purpose of it was to take all of it home and live it through the 40 days of Lent. Oh.